Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we'll be discussing the sacraments, and today we're discussing baptism. This is the sacrament that's required in order for someone to receive any of the others. So, what is baptism? Baptism is one of the seven sacraments of the Roman Catholic Church, specific religious activities which, according to Catholic doctrine, always deliver God's grace to a person, as long as all the conditions have been fulfilled. The grace comes to people in different forms depending on the sacrament, and all sacraments are things that God himself institutes. After all, all sacraments involve God committing to bestow grace on someone, and nobody else can commit him to do anything. Baptism, in particular, gives a very special grace, in fact, a few special graces. In the first place, when someone is baptized, it removes all sin from their souls, both original sin and also personal sins. In addition, it also removes all punishments due to the person because of their sins. Now, if the person isn't a child anymore, they have to be sincerely sorry for their sins in order for the personal sins to be removed, but original sin will always be removed by baptism, and there's another benefit too. In addition to the removal of both sin and punishment, baptism also brings people into the Catholic Church, making it possible for them to receive the other sacraments. So how does baptism work? What actually goes into the process of a typical Catholic baptism? Firstly, Baptism is usually administered by a priest, although really anyone can do it, but only if there's no priest available, and only if it's absolutely necessary, if they have the use of reason, know how to give baptism, and intend to do what the church does. At a baptism, generally the person being baptized either picks the name of a saint or has one picked for them, though it doesn't really need to be a saint so long as it's not a heretic or a non-Catholic or someone like that. The idea is for it to be the name of someone very holy who could serve as an inspiration in your own Christian walk. In fact, if it's a saint, so much the better, since you can then pray to the saint and ask them for their help when you need it. Also, at baptism, you receive godparents. Godparents can be any Catholics who aren't your parents, although they should be people who know the faith as well, so that they can help you learn it. Even if they can't come to the actual baptism, they can still be your godparents, as long as you have their consent, and as long as someone attends in their place. A number of other ceremonies take place at the usual baptism, including a profession of faith, placing salt in the mouth, holding the stole of the priest, uh, the stole is the straight cloth that the priest wears over his shoulders and around his neck, which hangs down in two strips down his front, an anointing of the person about to be baptized, and the giving of a white garment or cloth to the person being baptized, as well as a lit candle. Each of these actions is symbolic of some part of the Christian life, and they all confer special graces. You can be baptized without them, but if you are, you should participate in these ceremonies later to receive the graces that they offer, if you possibly can. The actual baptism itself, however, takes place when water is poured over the head of the person being baptized, and the baptizer recites the words, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost can also be used. From that point on, the person is baptized, and receives God's grace. Baptism is needed for salvation. You can't get into heaven without some form of baptism. This is because when each of us is born, we already have a serious sin on our souls known as original sin. Baptism removes original sin and gives us a chance to start over. It's been widely believed in the past that there was a place called limbo where people would go if they died with original sin on their souls, but not with any other sins. Limbo was described as a place where people could be kept away from punishment, but also not fully in the divine presence. There are certain issues with limbo, however, that make it difficult to accept at face value without much better explanations for what precisely it is and how long it lasts, but that's a totally separate topic. John the Baptist, as his title implies, baptized people, but his baptism wasn't a sacrament because it hadn't been instituted by God, so it didn't carry the same graces as modern baptism, which Jesus taught to his disciples and commanded them to give to others. Going, therefore, teach ye all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Matthew 25, 19. Next time, what's needed in order for a baptism to be invalid? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.